Are you ready to learn how to delegate your calendar to your virtual assistant? So one of the key things when you're an entrepreneur and you're a founder of your own business is that your calendar will go a little bit crazy. And this is where usually your virtual assistant would come in to manage your calendar. But how can you actually delegate it properly? And I'm going to walk you guys through step by step what that looks like. So make sure to watch until the end of this video for the key thing that will even make it easier for your assistant to manage you. First off, what is calendar management? It's basically your assistant making sure that one, the boundaries have been set on your calendar on when you want to work, when you want to do meetings, when you want to do certain things in your life. It's also managing and making sure there's no overlap. It's sending out calendar invites and it's also possibly helping you prep for those meetings as well. First step for this is choosing the tool that you and your assistant are going to be using. So for this, depending on what you have, for me, I have two different tools for managing my calendar the first one is just Calendly because Calendly people can just book ahead if I'm giving them a specific link and my assistant knows all of the links for different types for calls with clients for calls with people in the team even the calls for the podcast I'm starting to do as well as other people trying to book into my time I have different links of different types of calendars for them and my assistant knows them all the second one is Google Calendar which is basically just where I have all of my life essentially my schedule everything else I know different people will use different tools you might be using Outlook you might be using just your Apple calendar if that's what you're using or you might be using more upgraded other tools where you're combining different parts of your calendar if you have different email addresses diff different calendars for example and you just want them all in one place but it's essential that you choose a tool make it just super straightforward and simple you don't have to dive into or nerd out or complicate it too much just choose one so then you can create your system from there next is you're going to go ahead and create your system with your assistant the first thing is you want to communicate with your assistant your preferences so what this is is what time do you prefer to start working or for people to have the ability to create eight meetings on your calendar what are the times that you might want to have certain cutoff times of like okay this is the latest that I will do meetings for example for me because I am in the Philippines I have different limits depending on where they're at so the top of my time is 11 p.m. my time and then the earliest is 7 a.m. I will sometimes do 6 a.m. it's really needed but the earliest really is 7 a.m. so depending on your preferences you want to put that out you also want to build out the times that you do want to have your habit Habits. So for example, for me, I have the time blocked from when I want to work out, from when I want to do certain routines. I also have blocked time on my Wednesday afternoons, for example, where I have no meetings, where I can choose to just take the afternoon off or I can choose to use the time to do a little bit of focus on projects that I haven't been able to get to in the week. Next is you also want to put in your focus hours of like when do you know that you are the most productive of when you can work, basically that you, you want to make sure that your assistant does not put any meetings on there so for example for me it is 10 a.m. every single day I have a focus hour that I use either as a buffer time as I starting to get to work on Mondays or a way for me to wrap up what I was working on on the week so then I have in between your know, Tuesday Wednesday Thursday at 10 o'clock I'm working on the projects that I want to work on or I also use it as a time to block off when I'm going to be recording these videos next is you also want to map out your recurring meetings and when do you want to do certain check-ins with teammates when you want to do certain check-ins with clients, is it going to be weekly, is it monthly, is it quarterly, yearly, whatever that looks like, you want to map it out on your calendar as well as birthdays, anniversaries, special dates to you that your assistant will learn to not put anything on those dates because you're going to do X, Y, and Z. You also want to map out even the ones that aren't really recurring, like they don't have a weekly or daily cadence, but they are something that pops up in your calendar often. So for example, discovery calls, onboarding calls, basically it's a type of calls they don't happen on a recurring basis but they do happen from time to time and they're usually in the same format every single time so you want to walk that through with your assistant for them to start noting and actually mapping it out into your calendar and of course contingency so contingencies is if you're sick at what point do you tell your assistant to move everything else? If you're going on vacation, what happens then? If you're recurring meetings during a vacation time, for example, when does your assistant start rearranging and moving around your schedule? So you're putting in what would happen if, the what if phrases basically so your assistant can start moving on autopilot and they don't have to keep double checking with you on whether or not they can book certain meetings on your calendar so you're putting in just 
different, again, what ifs and mapping that out with your assistant so then they have just a quick and easy way to judge if a meeting should be there or not. Next is you want to do a 10% test. Now, as your assistant is slowly going to build your calendar, you might even be the one setting up the different booking links for your calendar, is you want to do the 10% test. What I mean by that is as you've given them your calendar, you want to see as they're going through and they're getting started, you want to look at how they've come through so far, if they're on the right path. That way you can give them a quick redirect as they're going through the process. You don't want it to be where your assistant has already been 80% you know, through and they've done it all wrong and everything's terrible. You want to set where you're checking on them at the 10% mark, especially if this is a newer task for the both of you. As an example, you can ask them like, hey, I want to have a meeting with so-and-so. Can you find times on my calendar? And give me an example of what the invite would look like. So with that process, you're just checking from 10% before they even send out that invite, before they put in too much effort in it, you're already checking their work. So again, you can redirect them and point them in the right direction, or of course, encouraging them if they're on the right path. Then you want to start creating the template. So what I mean by this is, with with your assistant if they're managing your calendar and they're managing your email in other words they're communicating to different people as you there has to be templates in place of what emails they would send for rescheduling for booking calls or what would be in those calendar invites that you have especially the recurring ones to help prep the people in the best way you might also want to map out essentially with the contingencies of what are the emails that they're supposed to send if you're sick if you're on vacation if they want to just move things just because other things popped up as well so you're essentially now fleshing out the system that you first started out and actually now putting in actual templates and things to send to people depending on what event or what date or what happens essentially as they're managing your calendar. Next step is you want to start creating your daily system of checking in. So within maybe the first two weeks of them managing your calendar, you want to have a daily just check five minutes tops of them walking you through your calendar and what changes they might have made during those first two weeks. So for example, for my assistant, when I was first training her on how to do this, we would actually just open up my calendar while we're doing our daily sync and she will walk through, okay, this is what's going on on your calendar today. You have this discovery call with this person. You know, I crawled or created the profile for you and I was talked about in the last meeting. So then as they start getting more and more confident, as you start redirecting them or putting on the right path with a 10% test, is then you can just start trusting that as you go into the meeting, things are already prepped for you, things are already smooth, they've already been confirmed or not confirmed or canceled. You're also building that confidence that you can trust in their work. Essentially, it will now switch back to the weekly feedback system of every single Monday, for example, for my assistant. She walks me through the calendar and asks me like, hey, I saw this, would you like me to move this here? Or is there any other meetings that you want me to move around depending on what your schedule is or priorities are for the week? So then from daily, it becomes just weekly and usually throughout the week, if there are any changes, my assistant is very quick to work on them and she will let me know like, hey, this person didn't seem that they're going to be interested in showing up for the call at all, don't worry about it, I'll cancel and delete it off of your calendar. Or like, hey, so-and-so said that they're sick, they wanted me to reschedule, I moved it to this date, I know you're working on the X, Y, and Z time. So basically throughout the week, they're a little bit more independent in what it is that they're doing and they don't have to keep tapping you for different things. They can make decisions as you, as they're learning more and more about your preferences and what usually happens, like what's the cadence of your schedule. And lastly, and this is the most important part, is you wanna start having your assistant making sure that they're documenting and iterating on the system that you've created. So having them actually create an SOP, for example, or a standard operating procedure of like this is how you schedule things into you know for example this is how you schedule things into Leanne's calendar this is how you move things in Leanne's calendar that has a complete like checklist preferences the templates and the assets that the person would need as if then later on your assistant will be delegating this to someone else or to make it easier for you as well let's say your assistant is sick or on leave you're going to be able to find certain templates and emails to send to them so this has happened to me multiple other times where I'm always more than happy to have my assistant take time off because she deserves it and she kicks butt. But anytime that there's an email that I need to send to a client because they're trying to schedule a call, then that everything is easy for me to find and it, I don't have to feel like my assistant is my clutch. I depend on her, but it doesn't mean that I am essentially useless if she's not there. So that's why the documentation part is important as well as the iteration is as you guys are going through, you stress testing things, you know, things shift around, there's an easier way for your assistant to know ahead and start iterating and changing the documentation because you have it already written down. It's easier for them to improve it, to make it better, or to make it 
even automated to the point where moving things around doesn't have to become a hassle. Having your assistant successfully manage your calendar is really at the beginning about you making sure that they understand your priorities and later on they will be managing you and know what your priorities are and what you should be working on and even reminding you on what to do but it does have to start from you. They won't automatically understand or know what it is you're talking about if they don't get that guidance, that start off guidance from you. Now, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below what calendar app do you use? I would love to know and learn and maybe even test it out. And if you still haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to run a business from home, which you guys can check out this two playlist right here in the latest video right here. Hope you guys have an amazing day and remember that small steps matters and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!